Hello my fellow Brickheads, it is I, Galaxy of Bricks here, and welcome to a, another LEGO video. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I have actually done a LEGO video, and for those of you who are subscribed to this channel, you'll know that it was a LEGO Marvel video that I did, and before that it was a few weeks and I did another LEGO Star Wars video. This is going back to LEGO Star Wars, so don't panic, we are back to what we routinely do on this channel anyway. Um, and today's LEGO set review is what I would classify as one of the almost perfect LEGO sets out there. Because, as with a lot of great things, nothing is perfect. It can always be improved and there's always things out there that can be changed and chopped around. But in terms of a LEGO set within the Star Wars universe, this is at least 95-97% to 97 perfect. One minor adjustment, and this would be, heads down, the perfect, if not one of the perfect Lego sets. And that is this, set number 75316, and it is the uh, Mandalorian Starfighter, released August 1st, 2021, as part of the Summer Wave. Um, originally retailing in the UK for about 49.99, and I think it was about like 59.99 in the US and Canada, and then obviously Europe varied a little bit. Originally, um, these were one of the newest sets you could get in August, but obviously we've had the winter line coming now, so it's a little bit older because it's almost a year old come, come this August, but you can still get hold of it and it's still kept its price per um, since its release. It has a piece count of 544 pieces and three minifigures. And like I say, for me, it comes to being one of the most perfect Lego sets that you can get with just one minor adjustment. But we will go into that um, as the video progresses. So, without any further ado, let's get into the review. Now, just to give you a little bit of context, a little bit of backstory to this set, um, for those of you who have not yet seen Star Wars Clone Wars, um, the... Obviously, the recent animated one, not the original early 2000s one that was on the Cartoon Network, the recent one. Um, there are mild spoilers ahead because this set itself is actually based around um, the season five arc on Mandalore. So this is where Darth Maul has usurped, effectively taken control of the Mandalorian throne and now rules Mandalore. Um, with an iron fist, basically. He controls the planet, he controls the throne, he does everything. He's got the Mandalor he's got the Mandalorians loyal to him, and then there's the Mandalorians that are loyal to um the original throne and everything else in between. So this set, what many thought would be released based on the recent season of Clone Wars, season seven, and the obviously the you know, because we've had Ahsoka's throne and we've had um, some of the other sets. No, this is based on earlier season five, which isn't a bad thing because it, I think the Mandalorian arc is one of the better arcs of that season. So, you know. Right, so without any further ado, we will start with the minifigures and we will then work our way to the set and then we will do some, you know, features, feelings, things like that. So to kick things off, we'll go into the minifigures. There are three minifigures with this set. And we will start with the generic figure of this set, which is this. And now this is the Mandalorian Loyalist. He is loyal to one of the characters within this set. You know, he's very loyal to the Mandalorian throne, his culture, things like that. Um, I mean, I really like the body art. I think the shade of blue is very nice. And I think the helmet piece is very nice as well. Um... The jetpack isn't anything fancy. It's just a generic dark, dark grey kind of, you know, colour jetpack. But that's not a bad thing. There's no arm printing on this one like there is with a lot of Mandalorian figures. Though, one thing I do like about this is, based on the characters, they've actually given them a variation of the blaster. So instead of getting your standard blaster, which... You get in a lot of Lego sets now. They've stuck very close to the Mandalorian lore and they've gone for the dual welded blasters um, that you see with Mandalorians now. So yeah, really nice figure. If you look very closely, you'll see there's some detailing on the chest where the armor's chipped away. It's battle-hardened, it's weary, it's good. 
Um, there is no face for the Mandalorian loyalist character because obviously it's not a specific character. It's just somebody to add to this set for playability. Um, I mean, you can change it up. You can have this as anybody as you want. It's not too bad. Uh, so I think that is, I mean, overall, nice figure. I think for a standard Mandalorian with no name, you can't go wrong with that. Our next character is the antagonist of this set, and that is this guy, and that is Gar Saxon. Now, he is um, Darth Maul's right-hand man on Mandalore. He was um, a very staunch Mandalorian loyalist who believed in the Mandalorian culture, that they shouldn't bow to the Republic and they shouldn't remain neutral. They should be warriors. They should take what they wanted, things like that. And Darth Maul preyed on his... Um, his thirst for power and, you know, his thirst for wanting more and made him his right-hand man. And you can tell with just how important he is to the actual lore of this set because his helmet is a standard Mandalorian helmet that has got horns to it. And obviously these horns aren't as big as they are in the actual TV series, but that isn't such a bad thing. But the colour itself, I think, is fantastic. I mean, I love the yellow visor print on it. I think... It really contrasts with like the sort of the reddish browny orange kind of colour they've gone for for his helmet. The armour detailing is very nice. And I mean, his facial print as well is really nice as well. And it kind of looks a lot like Gar Saxon within the TV, uh, the TV series as well. I mean, he does have it's kind of like short, short cropped blonde hair. But I mean, it's that short with a minifigure like this. You can't really... Uh, go wrong with it and again he comes with the mandalorian blaster as well and i think for those of you who have seen this uh, particular story arc and those of you who've seen rebels as well you'll recognize this guy because later on in star wars rebels he becomes a um imperial super commando as well so he's actually very very much linked to the future of mandalore and he's also very much linked to the fate of the Mandalorian people. And as a bad guy, I think he's fantastic because his armor color and his detailing sets him apart from a lot of the generic Mandalorian characters you, that you get. So I think that is very nice. And we come to the biggest figure of this set who is actually getting her debut in this set. She hasn't been released so far in any other sets. And that is this character. And it is... Bo-Katan Kreese or Bo-Katan. Now, just to highlight the significance of this character, this character herself has appeared in the um, Clone Wars TV series. She's appeared in Star Wars Rebels. She's made appearances in The Mandalorian. Um, her voice actress also portrays her live action um version as well so for those of you who are familiar with Battlestar Galactica you will know that um, Bo-Katan is voiced and played by um Katie Sackhoff who plays um Starbuck in the early 2000s reimagined Battlestar Galactica and so this character is intrinsically linked with three Star Wars properties and the fact that you get her cat um, her minifigure debut in this set as opposed to in anything else i think he's just fantastic i mean the helmet detailing is very nice you know it's very much different to what you get and i think lego have really made the detail on her very good and if you don't want her to have a helmet on like you see her within the uh, series you can also have her with a headpiece and her trusty headband as well so you know, she's got her short cropped hair, which you see her in throughout the series and uh, the live action one. And then obviously, you know, you've got a more angry series face as well. But this is your default Bo-Katan um, with the hair and the headband as well. And I mean, her armor detailing is, is fantastic as well. It's almost very kind of early Jango Fett-esque. So when you look at some of the early Jango Fett figures that they released from Attack of the Clones to early kind of Clone Wars era Lego sets. Her armour kind of reflects that a little bit. So it's very dark. It's very light silver accents with blue. And, you know, 
it's very much in keeping with who she is within the series. So Lego have released her in this set, and I think it's fantastic what they've done. You know, this version of Bo-Katan is actually one of the best characters I think that I own overall. And I think just the fact that you get her in Lego minifigure form goes very well because you can use her for your, um, if you're doing a Mandalore mock or you're doing something related to the Clone Wars or you're doing something related to Star Wars Rebels, you've got the option here to have a Bo-Katan. And then obviously you've got somebody like Gar Saxon who can be the antagonist of that if you want to use him with the recently released, you know, um, Mandalorian throne and Ahsoka Tano. So you've got your options there. And I think these three figures are actually very good for a um, £50 set. And they could have included another exclusive, but I think having Bo-Katan, Gar Saxon and the Loyalist just goes very well within this set. Right, now we move on to the actual Starfighter itself. And disclaimer for this one, this is by far one of the more challenging Lego builds that I have done in recent times. I mean, obviously, I've talked about the ATST Raider and the ATST and how the legs are fiddly. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet, guys and girls. And that is this. This is the Mandalorian Starfighter. Now, just for a comparison, the original Mandalorian Starfighter, which was pre Vizsla's Mandalorian Starfighter, released in 2012, um, this is actually 151 pieces larger than the um, original 2012 one. So, despite there being changes in build techniques, and obviously a lot of sets now aren't as hefty, this one, because of on-screen accuracy and things like that they've been able to portray this quite well and i mean just to give an example this is how you know this is how long it actually is so i'm you know just it's literally you know the entire virtually almost you know effectively most of my chest width um i have the dimension uh, the dimensions written down actually just to give you an idea so in flight mode it's actually 33 centimeters long um, in the fuselage to front, so from here to here, it's actually 27, meter, uh, 27 centimetres front to back. So that's from the front end of the fuselage to the back end of the fuselage. And in its landing mode, which I'm going to show you momentarily, it's actually 30 centimetres tall. So, yeah, quite a big fella, this one. And, I mean, you've got your standardised... Um, you know, you've got your standardised accessories you get with a lot of Lego sets. You've got your stud shooters, if you can just see them sort of here and here. Um, you've got your standard old style stud shooters, I should say. You've got your flip fire missiles under the wings here. Um, and then an interesting feature that I realised is the fact that the, the cockpit actually rotates round. So if you want to have it sort of playability wise where you can have it sort of spin round and then it's being attacked and you want to spin it round and then shoot at whatever's coming behind it or things like that, you know, it adds to the playability and the features of it. And I think the detailing, as you can see on the wings, I'll just turn it that way for you, it's amazing. It, there's For a standard, you know, 59.99, 544p set, the actual detailing that goes into the wings is really good. And I must admit, I did... I got two thirds of the way through building this a couple of days ago and I was just so frustrated because there's, I'm just turning it around this way for you. As you can see, there's a lot of dark pieces and if you're not careful or it's late at night and you've not got good lighting or you're very tired, which I was when I started building this, um, you can go wrong quite easily. And I mean, it took me a couple of attempts to actually get this right because it's very fiddly. And I'll show you now. So this is its flight mode. This is actually its landing mode. And, you know, this is what it looks like landing. You know? So it's quite a big, hefty kind of set. But I think the detailing on it is fantastic. You've got so much that you can work with here. And it's very accurate to its on-screen portrayal in The Clone Wars and The Mandalorian and um, Rebels as well. So... This as a nine-year re-release, effectively in two thousand and one. Uh, sorry, two thousand and twenty-one. It's fantastic, and I absolutely love it. 
my only problem is I wish that I'd have picked it up when it was released in the summer line and not waited, you know, nine months or whatever to pick it up. Um, sort of when the summer wave wasn't as popular as it was. But alas, you know, each to their own. Um, now, at the start of the video, I said that this was close to being the perfect Lego set, but it wasn't the perfect Lego set. And a lot of the reviews I've seen online very much agree with me and I agree with what they have said when it comes to this set because, it, as you can see, when you have it this way, it actually tilts forward. There's no extra piece at the bottom for it to be um, stable and straight like that. It actually bends forward. It dips forward a little bit. And it's actually better for show you in um, flight mode. So, as you can see, if I was to lift it up like that, it actually looks very good. It's stands up straight it looks good it's it's flush it's in sync but if you, i actually let it go it dips forward now if we look underneath here as you can see you've got these little points here that can actually help with the um the landing of it and you've got one here which help keep it vertical but i honestly feel like they could have added an extra piece here or something under the wings here to keep it static because if you go into display it which i'm going to do it's going to look odd when it's like that so to say it's near perfect is very accurate because the build itself is great the minifigure selection is great the actual price per piece is very good 544 pieces for 59.99 you know, and it's a vast improvement on the 2012 one, which I never owned, but I've seen pictures of. And you can just agree with me. It looks, it looks better now than it did all those years ago. It hasn't aged very well. But yeah, it would be, it would be perfect or at least 99.999% perfect if Lego had introduced another landing piece here or something at the front tips obviously it wouldn't be accurate to its on-screen portrayal but it would actually make more sense um from a collector standpoint so i get it and obviously you know if you're not very careful it does wobble a little bit so to sum to sum it up You've got a really nice um, Lego set, fantastic mig uh, minifigure selection in the three Mandalorian characters that you get. And obviously with the recent resurgence and popularity of Mandalorian characters with um, obviously, you know, Dingerin, the Mandalorian Forge. You've got, you know, the recent Bo Book of Boba Fett sets as well. You've got a lot of things to sink your teeth into if you're... A massive mandalorian fan and you like mandalorians themselves and this set itself will fit into that ethos if you like mandalorians their culture their sub theme etc 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 this set definitely is a must-have collector's item for any not just lego fan but any star wars fan and having it as a display piece is going to be the main appeal for most of us that being said it's let down by one simple, easy to fix flaw, which is an extra piece at the front to keep it static and stop it from falling forward. So overall, fantastic Lego set, great minifigure selection, one of the best, if not top five, maybe recent releases that every Lego fan, Lego collector must have in their collection and every Star Wars fan must at least consider having in their collection let down by a small bit of inaccurate creativity. The standout figure for me is Bo-Katan. She's very much in keeping with her character in all the series that she appears in. The colour scheme of the Mandalorian Starfighter is fantastic. I love the grey, the blue, the overall aesthetic. As you can see, it's a hefty boy. And you are going to get a lot of fun and satisfaction out of it. But you're going to need to do a little bit of DIY to it. 
yourself to make it suitable for display. But it's not a deal breaker like you think it would be because it's an easy solution. You can get the piece you would probably need for it on Bricklink or you could get it on eBay or maybe you are one of those people who keeps all, uh, keeps all your spare pieces and has them in a drawer in a bag or a box or something and you can easily put your hands on a, a suitable piece of the same colour to help keep it level. But I don't, so I'm going to have to figure out a really good way of having this set on display without it ruining what I've already built because... It's a tedious, if not enjoyable build, but you've got to be very careful and you've got to be very, very on the ball with this set and make sure that you're following the instructions precisely. Um, the age range on it is actually for the ages nine plus. So it's a really good um, set to have for any budding collectors out there, anybody who is looking to start up a collection and wants a challenging build if not a satisfactory and very much detailed build. There are going to be some bits of it where you may need an adult or you may need somebody to help you just to get the um, the accuracy right because you need to make sure that both sides match up evenly. But again, it's an easy fix. You can just start again and go from there. Right, guys. So we are coming to the end of the video now. I have jabbered on a little bit too much, I apologise, but it's been my first video in a while and I wanted to make sure that I covered all my bases and I also wanted to let you all know that I have actually really enjoyed this set and I've really enjoyed making this video for you guys to watch, basically. <laughs> um, so if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the um, likes at the bottom, please subscribe to me, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I post because I'm trying to get a lot more content on um, my YouTube channel now. If you follow me on TikTok, you will know that I will be posting quite a bit on there and I'll be doing some stuff for my Instagram as well. So if you want to hit me up on those two platforms, it's Galaxy of Bricks or The Galaxy of Bricks and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And please, 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 without your support, guys, I can't keep making the content that I make and I can't keep doing what I do because if you guys don't watch it and you guys don't like it, then the money that I've spent on Lego isn't worth it, is it? <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, guys, I genuinely appreciate all the support you've given me and those people who've got in touch with me asking me, is everything okay? When are you making another Lego video? When are you doing this? When are you doing that? I appreciate it. It's nice to know that you guys are missing what I'm putting up. So until next time, guys, please take care, look after yourselves, and I shall see you all very soon. Bye-bye, guys. Take care now. See you later.